Shalom Israel, giving honor and praise to the Most High God for the reading and the understanding of his word and family. I want to wish every king, every queen, every prince, and every princess, I want to wish you a wonderful, magnificent Sabbath. And once again, thank you for bringing this in with your brother this week. And I really hope that y'all had a wonderful, wonderful week. I truly, truly do. But family, we are going to jump right into this one here tonight. Y'all can already tell <laughs> I'm in a really good mood. And I, and I am. I'm in a really, really good mood because I love what we are about to bring out. I absolutely love it. We are going to see the father's characteristics. That's what we're going to see here tonight. We are going to see how the most high deal with niggas. Okay? Because there are so many people still in Israel. So many people that are still playing around. They are still dealing in their folly. And I don't mean anything like... You know, they are purposely, you know, sinning and things like that. I'm talking about people that still have strongholds. Christianity is a stronghold on many people that are in the truth, or excuse me, that claim to be in the truth. There are still a lot of Christian strongholds out there. And, not, and it's not only that, it's not just that, it's not just Christianity, but also some strongholds for some of these niggas in these camps. And you're going to see that here tonight. You're going to see a lot of characteristics. And then also the main thing that you're going to see when we read these stories here tonight, you are going to see this is only our people and that nobody else can identify with this. You're going to see here tonight. So without any further ado, please, family, open your Bibles to the 1611 King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha. And we are going to be reading from Numbers chapter 16. Yes, indeed. Numbers chapter 16. Why? Just like a couple of weeks ago when we did the camp mentality thing, we was in the book of Numbers, remember? And in the book of Numbers, we was finding some stuff out, were we not? Yes, we were. And we're going to find some more out here tonight. But this is not about Israel. I want you to put your focus on God. I want you to put your focus on the Most High. I want you to really pay attention to how he gets down. So again, Numbers chapter 16, we are going to read this entire chapter and this is not going to take long. All right. Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Ibram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the sons of Aleth, the sons of Reuben, took men. So I got to make sure we break this down as we go through it. Do you see how the father was showing in chronological order things that he once paid attention to? Whenever the father start breaking things down and showing you chronological order of things, that is when you need to just bow, put them blinders on and stay focused. OK, and this is what the father, he's showing you right here. The, some men from Reuben. Watch this. And they well, before we even continue, I want to make sure that everybody completely understand this. This is talking about the children of Israel. All right. This is within the tribes. These are not outside people. This is talking about. Israel. All right. Verse two. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Now, I need y'all to understand something here, right here. Do you see how there were men in Israel that were known? Men of renown. That's what it means. A renowned person means, I don't want to say famous, but if we had to use it in today's terminology, yes, it would be famous. So there were brothers that were famous. So out there, you know, you have the Bishop Nathaniels. You have the priests of Box. You know, you y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know where I'm going with that, right? It's no different. Everything that happened back then is the same stuff that's happening today. All right? Let's continue. Verse 3. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron... And said unto them, ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, <laughs> every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then ye lift up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord? Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Let me get a drink, please. <laughs> oh, y'all know we get ready to get into some stuff right now, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> Y'all know it. <laughs> Y'all know it. Niggas. Niggas. Beefing. Beefing. The Most High gave Moses. Now, first and foremost, people don't like Moses because he is the one that's able to communicate with the Most High. And people know that because the Most High showed himself to Moses in a whole nine yards. And so now you got some brothers sitting up in here jealous. Hold up, nigga. Wait, wait, wait. How come y'all niggas, y'all the only ones going up there doing stuff? Isn't all the visual holy? <laughs> How many of y'all know the answer to that question? Please put it in the chat real quick. But y'all see those attitudes though? They're like, wait a minute, hold on. Wait, how come y'all niggas doing everything? <laughs> Do we not see that those very same arguments, first and foremost, first and foremost, we can start right here with this family. And I'm not talking about amongst the teachers and stuff arguing. I'm talking about where these other people, other teachers, they always come in and attack in this family right here. They always do that. And of course, we don't care. And it's not only with us, it's also with others too. There are, there are videos after videos after videos about other Israelite camps and stuff like that. And they out there arguing and beefing with each other. Talking about, hold up. How come y'all niggas know everything? Or the most famous one. Wait a minute. Y'all don't know the name. We know the name. Y'all don't know it. We're the only ones that know it. <laughs> we are the only ones that can break down the moon and all that stuff. Nothing different, family. Nothing different. Verse 4. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face you know, in shame. Like, oh, you come on now. Y'all niggas again. <laughs> y'all can only imagine how Moses was. Now y'all understand why Moses went up into the mountains for 40 days. Man, I don't want to be around these niggas. <laughs> Father, call me, please. I don't want to deal with niggas for 40 days, please. <laughs> Verse 5. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying... Even tomorrow, the Lord will shew who are his and who is holy and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. So now, two weeks ago, we did a lesson and that lesson was camp mentality. And do you remember when we was going through that lesson and I said that the father, he loves to do this. He loves to take things in the spiritual and manifest them in the physical. God is a show off. If y'all haven't realized, the most high loves to show off and I love it. Why do you think we are like that? Why do you think we are flashy and charismatic? Why do you think we are? And we're naturally that way. Why? Because we are the seed of God. <laughs> and we are. Bottom line. And for any other nation watching this, if you get mad about it, oh, well, too bad for you. I did not bump uglies with your nasty mother. I didn't do it. Your nasty ass daddy did it and created you and they brought you into this world and they brought you into this world. Not as an Israelite. That's their problem. Call them niggas. Call them and scream and yell at them. Don't call us. And don't worry. We won't call you either. Let's continue. Verse six. This do take you censors, Korah. And all his company. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with what censors are, it's right here. Y'all see this? These are censors. This is what they would put their incense in and burn them and carry them all throughout. So that's what these are. Now, do y'all see the color of these? You see that color? That's almost my complexion. Now, if you was to take these censors right here, if you was to take these censors and put them in a furnace and burn them, what do you get? You get the color of your Hawashai. Let's continue. Verse 7. And put fire therein and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, here, I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. 
Now, what they're doing right now, they're getting to the specifics of everything. What are we supposed to be doing? We are supposed to be keeping the commandments. What did the Father say our ultimate goal was? What was the end result of all things? The end result of all things of life is that we are to keep his commandments. There isn't anything else. Even again, I always bring up Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. When you go there, what does it tell you? In order to receive the kingdom, you have to keep the commandments. That is where the focus is going to be. Let me put this down for a second. That is what this ministry is all about. This ministry here in the royal family is all about telling Israel to keep the commandments. Okay? I am not going to get into silly debates with other people in regards to whatever little false doctrine that they want to get into. I don't got time for that. That's their business. You want to go ahead and sleep and claim that you marry seven other women? Have at it. I don't care. That's your thing. I'm just going to show the people in the Bible where it says don't do that. So y'all can get mad at me or you want to. I don't care. That's your problem, not mine. And why am I doing this here? Because there's going to be some things that's coming up here in a little bit. <laughs> and people... Y'all are going to get mad, especially for those of you that love the camps. And again, I'm going to make this clear again. I do not have a problem with camps, but I do have a problem with the people, some of them, that run them with false doctrines. And that's all I'm saying. Okay? All right. Let's continue. Let's go. All right. So now we are at verse 10. Here we are. And he hath brought thee near to him. And all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also? <laughs> For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord? And what is Aaron? And what is Aaron? That ye mummer against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Ibarim, the sons of Eliab, which said, we will not come up. He said, we will not come up. We're not coming up. Verse 13. Is it a small thing that thou has brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? Except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. So as y'all see right now, they beefing. They are out there beefing. So now they're like, Yo, hold on. No, no, no. Y'all niggas trying to kill us now? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is that what's really popping? That's what's really happening in these streets right now. Y'all niggas are trying to kill us, right? Okay, <laughs> let's see. Let's, let's continue. Verse 15. Well, no, no, no. Verse 14. Moreover, thou has not brought us into a land that flowed with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. They making it known like, yo, listen. And what is this? This is the very same beef and stuff that happens today. It really, really is. This is why your discernment has to be on point. I'm, tell I'm trying to tell you. Your discernment has to be on point. I'm First and foremost, somebody brought this out to me last week. And I want to say this while I'm thinking about it. If y'all notice that I skipped over a scripture, will you please put it in the chat and let me know? Please do that. Secondly, when it comes to people that are bringing the scriptures out to you, right? Or let's just say y'all are talking about the scriptures. Y'all are saying y'all are just having dialogue in regards to the scriptures, but they're actually not pulling any scriptures out. You need to be very concerned about that. Okay. Okay, that was gross. But you got to be very, very concerned about that. And why? Because if they're not bringing scripture, you need to start asking questions like, wait a second, why is this person not verifying this with scripture? Make sure you let them know if you're going to talk to me about scripture, bring the scriptures out. Okay? All right, let's continue. Verse uh, 15. And Moses was very wroth. Now, Moses, whoo, he got mad. He was pissed. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. So now Moses, he popping off. He like, man, so y'all already know. Come on, come on, come on. let's talk about this. Y'all know, right? We, we do this. Y'all know when we be so mad, we be like, nigga, oh, oh father, why? You know, y'all know when we start talking to God, like, ooh. Why are why you doing this? Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Moses was going through the very same thing. Moses was like, oh, these niggas here. 
yo, I'm going to hook off with one of these niggas. <laughs> he had to go and talk to the most high and be like, father, why are you bringing these niggas? Why? Why? <laughs> I, lo I love seeing our history, man. I love it. I, I love it. I love it so much. Uh, hey, let's continue. Verse 16. And Moses said unto Korah, be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow. Verse 17. And take every man his censer and put incense in them. And bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, 250 censers. Thou also and Aaron, each of you his censers. So Moses is telling him, yo, go get everybody their senses. He's making sure that everybody has exactly what the father told him to do. Mm. Do y'all notice this though? Do y'all notice how when, Mo, when the father tells Moses to do something, in this particular case here, he didn't hesitate. He was like, all right, boom. That's how all of us should be. When we hear the voice of the most high, we're supposed to respond. Boom. But many of us, we don't do that. We don't. You know why? We don't care. And that is something that most people, they won't admit, but they should. Because that's the start to a lot of their problems is that they don't care. They go through the motions, but they don't really care. Once they come off of the video, out the chat, and back into their own world or whatnot, a lot of people, it goes into one and out the other. We'll talk about that. Verse 18. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. Stop. This is where we got to take a pause real quick. What is the difference between back then and now as I read this? What is the difference between back then and now? What's the difference? I'm going to wait for a second. Hmm. What's the difference, family? Back then, the Most High used to show up. The Most High used to come down and be right there with his children. Does he do that today? Nope. Why? First and foremost, he told us he turned his back on us. Secondly, secondly, we are the most unruly, disrespectful children of all time. Why would he? Why would he? Honestly. Ask yourself that question. Why would he come down here? <laughs> I'm telling y'all, when you realize that we used to have that type of treatment, when the father would come down and talk to his sons, we are orphans. He abandoned us. Y'all got to understand that. He said, I'm not taking my eye off you, but I got to turn my back on you. We have been abandoned. And this is why it is so important for each and every last one of us that we keep these commandments so that we send the noise up to the angels. The angels start acting up and then they get the most high's attention. He's like, oh, they down there doing what they're supposed to be doing? All right, well, let's refocus. And that's what we got to do, family. We got to refocus. Okay, so let's continue. Verse 20. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, watch this, family. Separate yourselves from among this congregation. Why? Why? That I may consume them in a moment. That is one of God's characteristics. When the father is trying to tell you, separate yourself, I am about to do some killing. You know what most people do? They don't. They don't listen. This is why I'm telling you that your, your discernment got to be strong because the father tells you separate yourself and he'll send you the signals. He will send you the signals to tell you get away from either that person or these type of people. He'll send you the signal and there is no second guessing it. You know it. He said, because I'm getting ready to do some damage. I am getting ready to do some killing. I don't know. I, I just love every time I say that. With it, when it's in regards to the Most High, when the Most High says, I'm getting ready to do some killing. 
Why do I love that so much? Because he told us all throughout these scriptures. That's what he's going to do. Mm. But we usually focus on the other nations and stuff like that. We never really focus on Israel. So that's why I'm a little bit excited about this here tonight because he's focused on Israel. He's saying, I'm about to kill these niggas up in here. M Moses, Aaron, separate yourselves. Move out the way. But a lot of us don't like moving out the way. <laughs> we'll stand right there. The, we, we, we will even hear the father's voice and stay there. Who's the fool? You got to ask yourself that question straight up. Who's the fool when they do that? I'm telling you straight up. And then what happened? And then people, they get mad at God. They try to blame God when they going through things. And, and the most high was like, I told you to move and you didn't move. I told you to get out of the way and you didn't get out the way. So you took that ass whipping right along with him. That's why it is so important that we listen to the most high. We have to listen to when he speaks. So that's why I'm telling you, get your discernment up. All right, let's continue. Verse 22. And they fell upon their faces and said, oh, God, the God of the spirits of all flesh. Shall one man sin and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? <laughs> you see, and we talked about that many times. When one of us do something, we all get blamed for it. How many times have we talked about that all throughout? We talk about that all the time. That's why I am so adamant when I say keep the commandments, keep the commandments, keep the commandments, keep the commandments. Because even when you're not in the presence of Israel, you still got the most high and angels watching you. Straight up. All right. Verse uh, 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the congregation. Like tell these niggas, speak unto the congregation saying, get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan and Eberim. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Eberim and the elders of Israel followed him. Y'all see that? All right, let's continue. So now Moses, is he listening to the Most High? Yes, he is. Let's continue. And he spake unto the congregation saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. We just said that. You see that? Moses tried to tell them too. Get out of the way. I pray you get up and leave. The father is about to do some damage. I have told so many people that. I have counseled so many people. And guess what they do? Just the opposite of what I say. And then what do they do? They'll call back crying. <laughs> nope. I don't want to hear it. God told you what to do. You didn't listen. So you got your ass beat. There's a consequence for disobedience. Let's continue. Verse 27. So they got up from the, from the tabernacles of Korah, Dathan and Eberim, on every side. And Dathan and Eberim came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, hereby ye shall know that the Lord have sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. So now you got to understand the characteristic here of Moses now too, because Moses is making sure the Most High has all the glory and respect. He said, I'm not doing this out of my own mind. The Father told me to do this. So this is pretty twofold because Moses is letting them know, first and foremost, the Father spoke to me to speak to y'all niggas. And secondly, I'm not doing this on my own. The Father told me to do this. He made sure. But what I'm doing is coming here and letting you know because I am being obedient. Obedient to the father. Now, most people just think, you know, that Moses is ran out there, you know, telling them, hey, God said do this. No, that's not what's going on. Y'all know how niggas are. Y'all know. Can you imagine the task? What do you think about it? This makes me laugh thinking about it. <laughs> Can you imagine, right? God gives you the task 
to go to three different towns and talk to only niggas and be like, yo, God said, y'all got to y'all got to get out your cribs. Y'all got to leave your house because many of them, you got to remember, they are they are in plush homes. Nothing has changed. They got them dope houses. They got their automobiles or whatnot or whatever they used to do to dress up their horses. If you already know us back then. It doesn't matter what time frame we are in. We are going to be flossy. Y'all know that. And for Moses to go out there and tell them niggas that they got to give all that up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> them niggas like, Moses, if you don't get your ass up out of here. <laughs> Moses had to go through it. I'm telling you. All right, let's continue. Uh, verse, where we at? Where we at? Uh, verse 29. If these men die, listen to this. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. So now Moses is making this clear. He's like, yo, hold on a second. So if these niggas here, the ones I'm pointing out, if they die in natural causes, then you're going to know that the most high didn't send me. Then it makes me a liar. It makes me a liar. Watch this. <laughs> Verse 30. But, but if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth. And the earth open her mouth. Ooh, baby, baby. We about to get that here in a bit. When the earth open her mouth. But just for trivia, just for trivia, what does that mean? The earth opening its mouth today. What is it called? Uh, back then. The earth opening its mouth back then. What is it called today? Let's see who, ha who has the answer to that one. Okay, verse... Uh, 30, I'm going to read it again. But if the Lord make a new thing and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. This is, again, this is talking about Israel. The Most High got beef with Israel. And I need y'all to understand that. I hope you do. The Most High will put his foot in Israel's ass just as much as he'll do to other nations. But most people don't understand or believe that. They don't. They don't believe. They have, again, like I said last week, there's a lot of people that do not fear the Most High. And that's a damn shame. It really, really is. Let's continue. Verse 31. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about that. Yo, just think of, hold on. Sorry, wait, wait. We'll come back to this. Just think about this for a second. I know. I know. I know. I, ha I have a sick mind. I do. But can you imagine you and your crib just chilling, right? You and you doing all your nonsense. And then all of a sudden, you just feel the ground open up under you and you feel yourself and your house and everything just fall into the earth. Just think about that for a second. <laughs> oh God. Yo, that, yeah, nah, nah, I'm sorry. I don't want none of that. No, thank you. No, thank you. That is horrible. Let me read, let me get through this. Let me read this. <laughs> and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. Woo! Hell nah. And guess what? This can happen when you sleep. Just when you least expect it. This is, you know what those are? You know what they're called today? They are called sinkholes. It's in just a few minutes, but we begin with a situation that continues to develop here in Lakeland. A sinkhole has opened up near homes and a busy road, and there's a worry that it'll continue to grow until it's filled. All this happening near Scott Lake, where a road closure remains in place tonight. Our Chad Mills found out when that road might reopen. Sandra Benavidez Carpenter and her family had to see it for themselves. I told the kids we got to go see and try to see if we can go close. The small hole in the ground they first noticed Thursday night has now become much bigger. In fact, what you see here is an active sinkhole near Scott Lake in Lakeland. I was like, oh gosh, we literally saw a sinkhole. 
forming. Friday afternoon, Polk County shut down nearby Scott Lake Road as the sinkhole grew. At last measure, it's 75 feet across and just a few dozen feet from homes and the road. Well, you know, I was born and raised here in Lakeland and you always have to remember that that is something that happens in this area. Lucinda Hall, who lives near the lake, remembers what happened here in 2006 when underwater sinkholes partially drained the lake damaged homes and sank a gazebo. Just like one of those natural phenomenons, it's just amazing nature and the way, you know, things worked. The latest one, though, may not be as natural. We are aware that there was a well drilled in this area. Records show the company that owns the land got a permit for a 400 foot well back in April, and the county thinks that drilling may have pierced an underground layer of rock, causing the earth above it to ultimately cave in. If it becomes a further issue, then the county may get involved. But for now, the county feels the road isn't being threatened and no one has been ordered to evacuate. And with the sinkhole on private property, the county's sitting back for now and allowing the landowner to fill the hole. The county says the road can be reopened once the hole is filled, but that work will take time and likely won't be complete until Saturday at the very earliest. In Lakeland, Chad Mills, ABC Action News. And the road closure on Scott Lake Road spans from Old Scott Lake Road to Fitzgerald Road. Sheriff Grady Judd says if you don't need to be on Scott Lake Road, don't go there because contractors are actively working to patch that hole. <laughs> Y'all saw that and it's happening all over, all over. The Most High is letting us know he is back. He is back right here. His eyes is on this planet, baby. And these things are happening every day. You better get right. You better get right. So I can tell you, you better get right. Let's continue. Verse 33. They and all that appertain to them went down alive into the pit. And the earth closed upon them and they perished from among the congregation. God is cold. The Most High is cold. He buried them alive. He buried them alive. They all went down into the ground. There is no air. They all suffocated. Can you imagine? They are still there today. <laughs> oh, they still there today. Can you imagine how horrible that death was? Just think about this. You have no air, none whatsoever. So you were put into the ground and then it wasn't even that they just fell into the sinkhole. The most high closed it <laughs> on top of them. <laughs> the most high, yo, he said, all right, y'all niggas want to play? Okay, drop, drop. They all went down like, okay, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, here you go. The most high was building, he built a sandcastle on top of them niggas. He took their houses, all of their things, their aim, everything. That's cold blooded. Oh, mm, 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 mm. But what does the Bible say? The most high said, I'm a terrible God. So it's not like he didn't tell us. He said, I am terrible. Stop playing with him. I'm telling y'all, verse 33. Uh, no, no, verse 34, excuse me. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, and they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. So the Most High had to kill so many people for the rest of Israel to get their minds right. That's why whenever y'all are seeing these people dying around us, I'm telling y'all, when you see the, the, the Breonna Taylors, when you see all these, all these things, man, when you see all these people, the George Floyds, the father is waking us up. The father is trying to tell us, y'all niggas better get it together. I'm on my way back. I say that. And many of y'all just rolled your eyes at that comment. Mm hmm You're going to be rolling your eyes, and the Most High going to be rolling your ass right in that fire. Keep it up. Keep playing with him. Keep playing with him. Verse 35. And there came out of a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. Woo! Woo, 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 baby. <laughs> the Most High said, first and foremost, I'm going to drop them first, but the rest of them, I'm going to consume with fire. <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all, man. 
The most high, he, yo, he is no joke. He said, first, I'm going to bury these niggas, then I'm going to burn them up here. There were levels. There were levels. Which one do y'all think was worse? Honestly, I want to know, know the answer to that. What, do, <laughs> what death do y'all think was worse? The burying under the ground and suffocation or being set on fire and dying in that? Either way, the most high will move their air. Because you already know in fire, your air is constricted, not restricted, constricted. You might as well have a diamondback boa just wrap themselves around your throat. Whew, the most high is cold. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Verse uh, 36. Yeah, 36. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning and scatter thou the fire yonder, for they are hollow. So the most I said, I touch these, and so now they're holy. The censers of these sinners against their own souls, let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar, for they offered them before the Lord, therefore they are hollowed, and they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. Wow. The most I said, first and foremost, exactly what I killed them with is what I'm going to show everybody else. This is what I killed them niggas with. Y'all want some? You want to get your ass beat right along with them too, don't you? Don't you? That's a daddy. I don't know about y'all, but that's a daddy right there. The most high like y'all want to play with me, huh? Mm-hmm. Put all them things out there. First and foremost, the whole fact that he consumed them with fire when they were burning incense. So y'all already know everything about the incense, right? The most high, let me tell you why he was so mad. He was so pissed off. Because remember, when you burn incense, that's the smell going up there. Remember what the father said? He said, yo, there's a stink down there. So he was burning that. They were them evil, sinful niggas. The very same ones. Many of them, not all, but many of them. The ones that are guilty. The same Israelite camps and stuff today, them, them, them instant burning ass niggas, knowing that their camp is full of sin. Mm -hmm. They'll burn it right on camera for you, for you to see. Acting like they're holy. I'm trying to tell you. When y'all see people doing all that extra and everything like that, you got to start asking questions like, why are you doing all that? <laughs> like, why, why? Ooh. There's a reason behind why you're doing all that. First and foremost, we know black people don't give a damn about tradition. We all know that. But for whatever reason now, these are the very same people that preach sinful doctrine, but yet they have all these things up there. Didn't the father tell us that that's what the Pharisees do? <laughs> I'm going to leave that right there on your screen. <laughs> yeah, I said it. Verse 39, and Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers, brazen meaning brass, took the brazen censers wherewith they that were burnt had offered and they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar. So the most I say, yo, melt all that down, yo, and make it into something else. It's holy now. Verse 40, to be a memorial unto the children of Israel that no stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron come near to offer incense before the Lord that he be not as Korah, excuse me, as Korah, excuse me, and as his company, as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses. So now this is the passing of the Levitical priesthood. This is what it is. Well, I should say the forming of the Levitical priesthood. Because remember, with the Levites, their job was to do what? were to teach and preach to Israel. That's, that was their job. The Levitical priesthood, that's where that comes from. This is where it's happening right here. And who are the Levites today? They are the so-called Haitians. Okay? So that's who they are. So let's continue. We are at verse 41. But on the morrow... All the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, Ye have killed the people of the Lord. So again, it doesn't matter how many signs the Most High will send to us. 
Niggas are still gonna be niggas. You see this? After all that happened. Now, remember, let's go back a little bit. Let's go. Let's go back. Remember when the Most High brought us out of the land of Egypt? What happened? What did we do? We ran right back to the other gods. After all of that, the Most High split the Red Sea, did all that stuff. Niggas. Niggas. Still don't care. What was the modern day the most high visiting this earth? Alabama. Montgomery. How many niggas have gotten their minds right since then? <laughs> I won't wait too long because nobody got an answer. I do. It didn't do anything. It didn't even move the mercury. Do y'all understand why the most high said two-thirds? Is going to die. The majority of Israel is going to die. Yep. That's the truth. That's just the truth. All right. Let's continue. We are at verse 42. And it came to pass. When the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron. That they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation. And behold the cloud covered it. And the glory of the Lord appeared. So what happens every time they try to come against Aaron or Moses, the Most High shows right up in the form of a cloud. Today, the world like to call them UFOs. They're not UFOs. They're not unidentified. They're not unidentified. We know exactly what they are. They're chariots. So they can stop using that name because they are identified. Let's continue. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. You see, they had courage. Now they saw the father coming. So they right there, all that air right there in their chest. And they, yep, they came out now. Now standing right in front of them niggas. Not like, what? What? Watch this. Get you up from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. The most I said, get down. Get down. I'm about to spray the house. Get down. This is a drive-by. This is a hit. The Most High pulled up in the chariot. It was like, yo, I am, I'm about to kill all these niggas. Get down. Why do y'all think we do that with these drive-bys and stuff like that? It is all in our DNA. Y'all know some of y'all, y'all can't stand that. Y'all hate it. Y'all hate to hear that, but it's absolutely true. The father do drive-bys, but he does his with fire. Woo! It takes fire to make that gun charge, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, we are our daddy's children. Let's continue. Verse 46. And Moses said unto Aaron, take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar and put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord, the plague, the plague. The plague, the plague, the plague has begun. So now I can sit right here and look at each and every last one of you. Did that just recently happen? Was there a plague that recently happened? So now first and foremost, here we have all these sinkholes taking place, right? All these sinkholes, I showed you the evidence. And now, now it's talking about what? It's talking about what? Woo! Now, it's talking about a plague. There was a certain plague that hit this entire world in 2019. And then something started to happen. We just talked about this last week. Something started to happen. We got into the Bible. We opened it and then the world started to change. <laughs> telling y'all yo letting you know right now <laughs> we are reliving our history right now this time this moment and there is so much information that is going around we can't stop it you can't stop what's getting ready to happen you just can't and this that's why i say all the time this is the most exciting time ever on this planet because we're at the end of it we're at the end, and remember, the end of the world 
was Esau. In the beginning is us. Let's continue. Verse 47. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living and the plague was stayed. Is COVID still trying to make a comeback here today? Hmm? Did they not recently just say, along with COVID, that they were going to uh, start the mask mandates and stuff again? Did I or did I not, you know, hear about that? I mean, on the news or was it a fever dream that I was having? Huh? Which one? Let's continue. Verse 49. Now, they that died in the plague were 14,700 beside them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. Family, how good does it feel to know that we are reliving our history and we are going through this again? I truly hope y'all are keeping the commandments. I really, really do. I'm telling you, I can sit here and do this every week. It doesn't mean that you're getting the kingdom. It don't even mean that I'm getting the kingdom. There is one thing that guarantees us that we're getting the kingdom. So I want everybody, please, to go to Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14, please. I have to make sure that everybody understand what I read, when I read that. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Now I gotta stop for a second. This is the last book, the last page of this Bible, okay? This is the very last book. And I know I'm being silly, but I'm being very serious. This is the finality of the Bible. And the father told us we have to keep his commandments. That's what it's all about. It's not about your little arguments. It's not about what little debates that you want to have over whatever scripture that you want to twist. One key unlocks the door for your eternal salvation. And that's you keeping the commandments. I like to think of it this way. Your body is the key. When you get to the gate, do you know how a key, it has ridges and stuff in there, right? And those ridges are formed to unlock that door. Everything that you go through, everything that you go through, you had your dents, you broke the law, I broke the law too. Make sure I always make sure I put myself in there, too, because I am no better than you. As a matter of fact, I'll use me going forward. I have broke the law. I have done horrible things out there in that world. I was a no good piece of shit, rat, bastard ass nigga. I was. I was. And I am not ashamed to say that. I'm not. But all the things that I went through, all the things that I went through in my life. Guess what? Those were notches being put into my body. A whole bunch of them. But then the father stepped in and said, I'm going to repair you. But there's going to be some things that I don't repair. Because either like with Paul, remember Paul had an affliction, remember? And remember, he went to Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, nah, nigga, you'll be all right. You'll, nah, you good, you'll be all right. So there are going to be some things that are repaired and there's still going to be some notches. We're going to look just like a key. And then when you step up to that door, will you be able to fit inside that lock and turn it. <laughs>